Okay, everybody, let's get started. Where do you want to begin? From the top. This season on Broadway, new shows with familiar songs. Favorites from Broadway legends. Let's all drink tonight. You got trouble. Hollywood stars in powerhouse plays. Movies brought to life on stage. Hello, dearies. Girls, this is a good catch. <laughs> and released. All bringing people back to Broadway. You want to know what's going on in New York? We take you backstage to it all. It's Broadway and beyond at the Tonys. Hi everybody, I'm Dana Tyler. Welcome to Times Square and Broadway's Grand Gallery. Big playbills. It's so appropriate this year because this is a big season, restarting the industry after the pandemic shut down Broadway for a year and a half. It is Tony time. 34 shows were eligible for nominations. Dave Carlin takes a look at the musicals up for Tony Awards. Leading the way is A Strange Loop by Michael R. Jackson with a total of 11 nominations. And MJ and Paradise Square have 10 nominations each. All three have black writers creating the book in a Broadway season with inclusive, innovative offerings. A Strange Loop star Jaquel Spivey is Tony nominated for his Broadway debut in this Pulitzer Prize winning show about the gay black experience and searching for creative inspiration and love. Are you getting that from people who come up to you and say, Thank you for this unique thing that speaks to everyone, but speaks to some specific folks, too. People are hurting. People are not feeling accepted. People want love. People want to, to feel affirmed by other people, their own communities. And we've needed work like this. I honestly feel validated by the nomination because it, it, it feels like having taken the amount of time that I took was worth it. Lynn Nottage is Tony nominated for MJ's book. What we decided to do is that we were going to tell the story of just two days in his life when he's making one of his great concerts. In MJ, first time Tony nominee Miles Frost plays Michael Jackson. It's such an amazing feeling, and I, I take none of this for granted. Paradise Square, written by Christina Anderson along with Craig Lucas and Larry Kerwin tells the story of the New York City draft riots of 1863. It's an important story that needs to be told. Paradise Square! Joaquina Kalu-Congo is the show's Tony-nominated star. It's an epic original story about um, a community in the five points between the Irish and the black community and how they drifted apart. Girl from the North Country with the songs of Bob Dylan is set in a boarding house in the Depression. Like a rolling stone. I've been a Dylan fan my whole life. It stars Mayor Winningham, who is nominated for Best Leading Actress in a Musical. Singing the most iconic song ever, was there just a, uh, what, I mean, and doing it so beautifully, did you always know you could? The one time that it was uh, nerve-wracking was when he was there. <laughs> so I could, and I said to him, actually, when I got to meet him, he said, you had to sing Rolling Stone. I said, yeah, I had to sing Rolling Stone in front of you. <laughs> Six, the musical with book, music, and lyrics by Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss is a dazzling look at the wives of King Henry VIII that feels like a concert. It's all true. Um, it just, except the fact that they're a pop group, that's the only thing that's not true. <laughs> the pair wrote the musical for a theater festival while students at Cambridge University. It was meant to be just, you know, one month um, that summer, um, and then it became, yeah, a lot more than that. And Billy Crystal is back on Broadway with the show he wrote, Mr. Saturday Night, based on his hip movie. Stop the presses and shine the statue, cause buddy young will be coming at you. And New York City, Broadway, and Billy Crystal. How, do, how does all that come together now that you're living here again? And well, it is tremendously exciting to be back in a musical at, uh, at the age of 74 to make my musical comedy debut. The audiences have been phenomenal. Musical revivals now. The same year we lost the great Stephen Sondheim, the revival of his landmark musical, Company, arrived back on Broadway. Company's energetic Jennifer Samard is a Tony nominee in the featured actress category. I went in and did it the way I thought it should be done, and she saw it, and she's like, yes. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Nothing ever happened underground in Louisiana.
The revival of Caroline or Change stars leading actress Tony nominee Sharon D. Clark, her first time on Broadway. To be so welcomed and have such generosity from the Broadway community saying, we see you, we see what you're doing, and we're going to welcome you and say, coming to the fold is wonderful. We got trouble. And we wrap it up with The Music Man, the revival with six nominations overall. Its star Hugh Jackman is a Tony nominee this year. Being back on, on Broadway in a, a show as big and bold and bright and effervescent as this is just a dream. And I don't care who you are, when you wake up and someone tells you you got nominated by your peers for a Tony Award, that is, that's a special moment. <laughs> And co-star Sutton Foster is nominated. Yes. Why The Music Man and not something else? Being a mom, I was intrigued about being a part of something that was really joyful and and that had the idea of being able to show my daughter a show that has kids in it as well is like awesome because she's really interested in the fact that kids can be on Broadway too. She's only five. These musicals with a wide array of topics and themes joyful, innovative, and moving, and celebrated at the Tonys. Dana? Thank you, Dave. Matinee performance of MJ the Musical just let out here at the Neil Simon Theater. The show about the late pop music icon features 28 Michael Jackson and Jackson 5 songs, and there's a whole lot of dance, too. I spoke with the 22-year-old Tony-nominated lead actor Miles Frost, and it's clear to see how his lifelong love of music led him to Broadway. Don't start. Look at everybody. Miles Frost's entrance as Michael Jackson pulls in an awestruck audience and the story's ensemble dancers from zero to 60 in no time. MJ the Musical is set in L.A. in 1992 over two days of rehearsals for the Megastars World Tour. I feel so official in this jacket. <laughs> But the look has been in his life. Just a few years ago, in the 11th grade, Frost wowed his high school classmates with Billie Jean. His mother posted this video on YouTube, leading to a call from Broadway last year, after the first actor cast as Michael Jackson left the show. Previews with Frost as MJ began in December, his work becoming a breakout performance. Did you ever see yourself at this point? I mean, was this the dream? No. Okay. No. Um, I know this probably shocks a lot of people, but you know, I was, I'm I'm a very independent person. Like I I, I like being fresh. I like being new. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I wanted to be an artist. You know, I still do. You know, art being a, a musician and an artist is my my passion. He did this music video when he was a music technology major at Maryland's Bowie State University. Ooh. And. Uh, if you'd asked me a year ago what I thought my big break was going to be, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to have like a hit song and, you know, then I'm going to be performing all over the world and, you know, become the next Michael Jackson or, you know, of sorts, whatever the Miles Frost version of that is. Seems the sky's always been the limit. Growing up hearing the pop and soul music his mom played in their house and Frost says his number one fan has been a huge influence too. My grandma always listened to gospel music and she had a piano in her basement. He started playing piano when he was six, and lessons weren't entirely necessary. They were trying to teach me how to read the music. Okay. But they would play it first. So then I would play it right back, just like how they played it. By ear? Yeah. Between watching and playing and yes. listening. The self-taught musician formed a band with friends called Fresh Flight. Frost says he's taken from artists he's admired, like Stevie Wonder. Isn't she like and of course, Michael Jackson. As good as his dancing was, for the Broadway role, Frost went to boot camp, learning from Rich and Tone Talawega, Michael Jackson's longtime dancers and choreographers. Everything is super specific with Mike, you know, everything has a point, everything has a reason. And learning the book, that vocabulary and just learning the idea that everything can be, sh can be sharper. Then you go into the back slide. The Michael Jackson estate is one of the producers of MJ the Musical. Frost has met Jackson's brothers and his children who were there on opening night. It's a blessing that they received it so, so well. 
and with open arms and an open mind and want to come back and see it again and again and again. And now the 22-year-old is a Tony Award nominee as Best Lead Actor in a Musical. All that and the toaster lift. What does that feel like? Us. Uh, it feels great. Like, I have so much fun doing it every night. You know, it's something that I look forward to. It's like, I can see everything and everybody. It's such a it's such a blissful moment. No wonder Miles Frost is on cloud nine. Undoubtedly, one of the toughest songs to sing on Broadway right now is in the revival of Stephen Sondheim's company. Matt Doyle, who's a Tony nominee for Featured Actor, he does this performance. It's breathless. It's aerobic. He's speed singing the song Getting Married Today. Gets an ovation every time. Watch. Pardon me, is everybody there? Because if everybody's there, want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. Doyle says Sondheim himself was instrumental in helping him get the number just right. He really helped me, uh, helped him form the thoughts and how every single word that he's written informs the next thought. Broadway history is being made at the Lyceum Theater here on West 45th Street, home of A Strange Loop. L. Morgan Lee is the first openly transgender performer to be nominated for a Tony Award. She's a featured actress in a musical nominee. Lee says she's proud to be part of a production that challenges the status quo. The idea that people are describing this piece as a phenomenon is um, unexpected and beautiful and signals hope and, and a shift that I think so many want to happen. This is Lee's Broadway debut. She's been with the show since its 2015 workshop and appeared in the off-Broadway world premiere of A Strange Loop. There's much more ahead on Broadway and beyond at the Tonys right here from New York City's Theater District. Coming up, stars of the screen shine on the stage and the show's nominated for Best Play and Best Revival of a Play. And later, 21 performers are making their Broadway debuts in The Music Man. They tell us what it's like working with the stars who have taken them under their wing. Welcome back. Broadway's Court Theater on West 48th Street has been renamed the James Earl Jones Theater after the revered stage and screen actor. He began his Broadway career back in 1957. He has been in 21 Broadway plays. Mary Louise Parker is back on the Broadway stage this season at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater on West 47th Street. In How I Learned to Drive, th this is a really cool story because she is revisiting the role, the same character she played off-Broadway more than two decades ago. How I Learned to Drive is up for best revival of a play. Dave Parlin takes a look at the revivals and the new plays up for Tony Awards. Common sense, experience, and talent. American Buffalo by David Mamet is about three small-time hustlers. It premiered on Broadway in 1977. The revival stars Lawrence Fishburne, Darren Chris, and Sam Rockwell, who is nominated. You come out, and it's just, like, electric. There's an energy to it that yeah. looks hard to sustain. But it's exhausting, yeah, it's exhausting. It's one of those great plays, the great writing. To say those words is amazing. Trouble in Mind revives the 1955 Alice Childress play about racism in the theater. It stars Tony-nominated LaShans. We all have in our families and cultures things that we say privately but that we wouldn't say publicly. And what she did was she took our private moments and put them on display. <laughs> How I Learned to Drive reunites the original 1997 team behind Paula Vogel's knockout memory play that explores decades of abuse and aftermath within a family. It once again stars Mary Louise Parker and David Morse, both nominated. It's such an unexpected path you take to get to where you ultimately get. Mary Louise Parker came into the room 25 years ago, and she could make us laugh. She could, make, she could release us to weep. The three of us, it feels like some kind of synergy. I kind of pined for this play until it came back again. I think you have. And Tazaki Shungay's for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Debuted on Broadway in 1976, the force behind this season's kaleidoscopic revival, Camille A. Brown, is the first black woman to direct and choreograph a Broadway production in 65 years, and she's up for two Tony Awards. You just took this jewel and you and you 
turned it and showed us new facets of it. It's and a legacy piece. It's about the perseverance, like, and finding the power within yourself that you can persevere and move forward. The revival of the 2006 Richard Greenberg classic, Take Me Out, explores homophobia, racism, and toxic masculinity. It features three nominated actors, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Michael Oberholzer, and Grey's Anatomy's Jesse Williams, who plays the superstar center fielder who comes out as gay. The visibility matters, yes. and that we don't have an out yes. star baseball player. Yeah, representation matters, and it's what, you know, taking an idea from theory to practice. We were supposed to do it two, two years ago, and so to have gone through, you know, that, that shutdown together, and there's such an incredible bond between this group of 11 guys. The Stock Exchange, a brilliant idea. Nominations for Best New Play are led by the Lehman Trilogy. It spans 164 years of a family and its finance company. This production earned the most Tony nominations in a play category with eight. This ain't Top Chef. Clyde's by Lynn Nottage is about a sandwich shop where the owner may or may not be the devil. Played by Tony-nominated Uzo Aduba, who gained fame in Orange is the New Black. What she's offering is tough love to everybody who comes in there. And Hangman is a twisty thriller about capital punishment in England by Martin McDonough. Game of Thrones star Alfie Allen is nominated for best performance in a featured role. The co comedy can be morbid sometimes, but then you have really lovely warm moments in it as well. Cause I ain't got one, satisfied? Felicia Rashad is nominated for her role in Skeleton Crew by Dominique Moriso about life and layoffs at a Detroit factory. And The Minutes about the twisted politics of a small town council. Written by and starring Tracy Letts. The audience leaves talking about the play. They're not talking about where they're going to eat. They're not talking about where they parked the car. The minute starts off very funny and gets darker as the play progresses, something it has in common with several other contenders in this category. Dana? Thanks, Dave. Still ahead on Broadway and beyond at the Tonys, stepping into the spotlight for the very first time. We celebrate the 21 young performers of The Music Man, making their Broadway debuts. And this might be the best act ever at the historic Palace Theater. See how engineers raised it 30 feet off the ground. Welcome back. Broadway's Palace Theater reaches new heights. It was raised 30 feet above ground as part of a major renovation project. 34 high-tech columns were used to slowly lift the 14 million pound building. The Palace Theater was built in 1913. It overlooks the heart of Times Square. Here at the Winter Garden Theater, the cast of The Music Man is raising the roof eight times a week. The show is led by superstars Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster, but nearly two dozen Broadway newcomers in this show, they're making a lot of noise too. They spoke with John Elliott. How cool is it to make your Broadway debut in The Music Man? My favorite part is just seeing the audience feel so happy, you know, laugh and smile. It's incredible, especially because I'm making my Broadway debut with stars like Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster. Like, how many people get to do that? It's definitely mind-blowing to play Sutton Foster's younger brother. Let me say it once again. I got the role the day before the pandemic started. This was the thing that gave me hope. And at some points, I didn't think it was going to happen. And I felt so sad because of how many people were waiting to see this. The anticipation was so high for this show. How hard is the work? Um, it's like hard work, but it's always fun. Like, you're never, like, mm. doing anything you don't want to do. You know what I mean? A lot of people, like especially a lot of people in my family, they're like, oh my gosh, it's, it must be so hard for you to do school and keep up with dance classes and on top of that, do another job. And I'm like, it's actually just really fun. <laughs> like, it's not as hard as some people think. And so many people behind the scenes just help us and make it so easy. Is, is Sutton Foster kind of like a big mom or a big babysitter? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I have little rituals and little handshakes and little things that I do with each kid and make sure make eye contact with every single person. What's okay. your favorite number in the show? She poopy. 76, Marin the Librarian and Shapoopy. <laughs> Finale. Shapoopy and 76. 
What's it like to be on that stage when they just keep applauding and screaming for every single star? Well, it makes me <laughs> really, like, over-the-top happy. Thanks, John. The Tony Awards are back at Radio City Music Hall this year, and Oscar winner Ariana DeBose will be the host. Next, to look at her Broadway roots. Welcome back to Broadway and Beyond at the Tonys in front of Radio City Music Hall, where the host for the awards ceremony is Ariana DeBose, an Oscar winner and a previous Tony nominee. In 2018, she was nominated as featured actress in a musical for Summer, the Donna Summer musical. DeBose was an original ensemble member in the blockbuster musical Hamilton. And she dazzles with her dancing, singing, and acting as Anita in the film musical West Side Story, winning this year's Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. The 75th Annual Tony Awards at Radio City Music Hall are this Sunday. Our coverage begins at 7 p.m. with a streaming special on Paramount Plus, and then at 8, the awards ceremony starts. You can watch that on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. That's it for Broadway and Beyond at the Tonys. I'm Dana Tyler. Thank you for joining us.